Welcome to today's guided practice session. My name is Adam Manis. Today we are focusing on something that we've been paying attention to for the last few weeks. These are pentatonic scales. You know, we've been doing a lot of McCoy Tyner licks and voicings and things like that. And this is a kind of a surgical, precise way to practice pentatonics that give us that sound that McCoy really invented and made very famous on the piano. And so uh, I've been thinking about all this stuff a lot and I've been working it into my own practice routine. So I wanted to share some thoughts on how we can break up the pentatonic scale and uh, make it very useful. This works really well for piano players. It just fits with our hand really nicely, the way, the way we're gonna practice this, but it really works well with any instrument too. So no matter what you play, if you play saxophone or trombone, or trumpet or anything, uh, you can practice along with us today. So let's just break it down a little bit before we get practicing. What are we talking about? We're talking about the pentatonic scale. We're talking about this D minor pentatonic scale today, right? We all know this. It's a very simple five notes scale here in D. It's D, F, G, A, and C. And then we start over at D. This is mostly used, uh, well, it's used in a lot of situations, but you can really use it effectively over like a D minor seven chord, a Dorian. It works well too over like a D seven. and so many other chords. The pentatonic scale is very malleable in where we can use it. But today we're gonna to be using it on D minor. Okay, so we have this five note scale. How can we get that sound? Well, one thing I've noticed uh, transcribing a lot of great piano players is they use the natural shape of their hand uh, to kind of help shape their line as they're, as they're com coming up and down on things. So they might come down. They might turn on places like that. Like where their thumb lands on something, they might then go up as they're going down or when they're going up. They might turn naturally where their hand fits in. So that's kind of an exercise we're gonna use today to, to help us get these in, a, in, our, in our hands in a way that's not just us doing, you know. That's fairly boring. That's fairly, it has its place, but it's not what we really want. We want. Like even, even, well, that we'll get to in a little bit later, slipping inside and outside the changes, but we want that sort of like jagged turnaround phrasing as much as possible. So how do we get there? Well, we start by taking that pentatonic scale and moving it into four note We'll call them little modules or cells. And this isn't anything new. Uh, jazz musicians have been doing uh, these kind of modules or cells like this with different scales forever. It's, it's one of the easiest ways that we can kind of make sense of and get a handle on uh, some of these, especially like uh, modal patterns. So here we just take all the notes and we cluster them in groups of four. And very important to recognize these shapes. You know, these are all different shapes, right? Here we have the cluster at the top of the four, you know, cluster of whole notes. Then it's at the bottom and there's a, ma a minor third on top. And then we have like two seconds, you know, separated by a minor third. And then we have the cluster right in the middle with two minor thirds on either end. And then again, two seconds uh, separated by a minor third. So, you know, each of these, there's two of them that are the, kind of the same shape, but they're very, very uh, different as far as like how you go up. So getting to know these as shapes is really important. And this is where we're gonna start our practice today. We're gonna just practice these shapes. Going up and down. Why is not my, this was working. Well, for some reason my metronome stopped working. Here we go. Let's try it. There it is. Hey, we got it. Okay, so we just want to go up here. Just like this. And I'll, I'll slow it down even more, actually. We're going to take our time. We're just going to get these shapes. So we're going to go up the octave all the way from D as the lowest note to D as the lowest note and back down. Just getting these shapes in our hand, because this is going to be an important part of how we practice this going forward. Play with me. At the octave, now back down. Just recognizing at the piano 
these different shapes. If you play a horn right now, you can arpeggiate these, break them up already. But for pianists, this exercise can be a game changer in how we think about these and in how we're able to apply these to our improvisation. Because if you learn these shapes as a whole, you do not have to then think about the individual notes. Now you can just move your hand in the different patterns that we're going to talk about and the shape is already there, right? So you're just moving your hand over these shapes and then you're able to break it up in cool ways. Another few times at this. I'm rushing like crazy through this thing as I'm talking. One more time. Again, just recognize the pattern. With this on piano, it really helps to be able to look at this too. One of the advantages we have is being able to see these things. Okay, so there's the basic shape, right? Those five shapes are so crucial to what we're gonna deal with today. And it's a great way to practice pentatonic. When you're practicing pentatonic scales, try this. And then, you know, it doesn't have to be these shapes. You can skip notes and then just practice like how these different shapes work. You know, there's a note skipped at the top. It's a great way to get shapes in our hand. Why would we want to do that? Well, because like I said, we can now use less information to get some cool stuff. Like we can break up those four note shapes in different ways. The first and most obvious way you might have already tried, it's this. It's going up, breaking them up, up going up. And then we can do down going down if we want. Try that. Dun, 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 dun. Right here, 16th notes. Dun. Just gonna take these shapes that we just did and break them up in 16th notes, up going up, and then we'll get to the top, we'll go down going down, okay? One, two, dun, uh. That was a horrible count off. Down going down. Same shape, we're just thinking about these shapes, right? But breaking them up. Let's try it again. One, two, da, da, da. Down going down. Again, one, two, and go. Down, going down, and having count off issues today. Okay, that is an awesome exercise to now break up the shapes, right? So we've established these four, these groupings of four for the D minor pentatonic scale, and we can break them up. You know, we can go up, we can go down. And getting these at speed, can be really, really useful. Now, now is when it can kind of start like in, in this point of your development, you're gonna start like you're playing patterns and that's okay. And people are gonna be like, don't sound like you're playing patterns. You have to for a little bit, all right? Everybody sucks for a minute and then you have to get better at it. But there's no avoiding kind of getting through the stage where you your brain figures out the patterns. Don't let anybody convince you otherwise. Just do what you feel is right for your development because I really believe that thinking about these things in that way can get us to the promised land of playing melodically and organically and human and all that stuff. So what's the first thing we can do to break up sort of the pattern-based version of that so that we don't sound like robots? It's by adding maybe another pattern to the patterns, right? So we have our up going up here. Now, when I get to this second cluster, I'm going to break it up into this pattern, skip, and then down. This is one of my favorite patterns for these four notes. It's right, skipping, and then down, and then skipping, and then just down. Right? So this pattern, now we already start like we're, we're playing something. Now we're playing some music. So hip. And then you just take these up in groups of two. So then the next, I have the next two clusters here, right? And then the next two here. 
right? And then we'll we'll just keep going. It, it doesn't say et cetera there, but I mean to do this, et cetera. So, and then finally we'll end with, right? So, right, wherever we end, we start the next one. Let's do it. I'm gonna get my metronome right here so I can count it off. Right here seems pretty good. Four. Yeah, let's try it. So we're just gonna go up here. Right? We're just going up kind of in groups of two with these two different patterns. One, two, sha, 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 sha. Four. 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 Good, let's try it again. Two, sha, 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 sha. Four. 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 Good. Okay, pianist, we're gonna take this up just a little bit. We'll move it up in tempo. Pianist, now I want you to add some harmony to this so we can hear how this sounds. Like all the McCoy stuff we've been doing, we're adding very simple three note harmony built in fourths. D, G, C. That's all you need to do. And then we can move this around diatonically. Once we go higher, it's easy to just move these up the white keys, right? That's what's so great about D minor is we don't have to think about any kind of accidentals as we move up. Let's try it. One, two, sha, 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 sha. Okay, let's do it again. Two, da, 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 da. All right, let's keep going up in tempo. This, one, this is a good one that we can kind of pick up. Again, think about the natural shape of how these can kind of roll in your hand. This is good right here. One, two, da 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 da. It's real. It's a real tempo. Hmm. Hmm. Good. One more time. One, two, da 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 da. Let's go up two octaves. We got plenty of room here. Let's keep going with it. One, two, da, 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 da. Another octave. Here we go, last one. So now you can see just how useful these things are gonna be. This is such a great way to play. It's such an easy thing to think about. And again, we're just thinking about these four note modules or cells or whatever you wanna call them. And this is nothing new. This is how loads of musicians have gotten this sound into their hands, into their playing. Love it. Okay, now how do we take this and how do we get that slip sliding outside the changes sound? 
Well, we have to practice that a little bit and let's do that now. So first we wanna start again with the cells. So here's a little exercise where we can just take it up, take the cell up to, you know, from one to the other, and then we just take that last one and we go up a half step. All we're thinking about, we're not even really thinking we're going from D minor to E flat minor, which we are, but we're just thinking about taking those notes up a half step, <clears throat> pardon me, and then we'll go back down to where we, you know, back down a half step, and then we go up the next, and we take that up a half step, and then we'll go back down into the next and take the top cell up a half step and then back down. So it sounds like this. And again, this is a way to get these in our hands. We're gonna break these up and it's gonna sound dope. And then the last one here at the octave. Let's try it. Uh, let's go quarter notes. Right here. One, two, three, and. Okay, again, so we're just going up those four note cells in the D minor pentatonic scale, and then the last, and that second one, we're taking up a half step, and then we go back down and we start a new, whole new pattern. Let's try it again. Two, three, and. Mm. One more time. One, two, three, and. Again, for pianists, this is just so crucial to make it easy to get these patterns in our hands so that we have them. Okay, so that kind of work is just, it's enormous for actually being able to understand how simple this can be. So how do we put this into practice? We do this. Now this is just one of the patterns that we'll do. We'll do this with, with all of these shapes, right? So we go up, going up, and then we do our little skippy pattern. And then we take that module up a half step and we just go down. Right, isn't that great? That's the sound. There it is. That's it. That's exactly what we want. That's exactly what we want. So again, it'll sound like this. And then back down. Same pattern. We're just doing the different modules. That second module, right? So that one. Is just up and then we do our little skippy one right skip up and then down and then we just take that up a half step and <sighs> love it let's start here with eighth notes let's start pretty slowly so it'll sound right as we think of these shapes and we get them in here we go one two three and four and three and three and three Last one, three and I love those. All right. Let's take it up a little bit. One, two, three, and four. And.
last one. And Ooh, that's so nice. Okay. Let's make it a little bit more real. Don't know that. We're going to take away the gap there. So it'll sound like we're going to speed it up. We'll take away the gap. So it sounds like. Okay, so in my left hand for pianist, I'm just playing D, sorry, yeah, D, G, and C from the bottom up, right? Just a little fourth quartal voicing. And then when I get, when I take that last cell up a half step, I just move that voicing up a half step to E flat, A flat, and D flat. That's all it is. So eighth note's right here, and we're taking away that gap. Let's do it. One, two, three, and four, and. Again, one, two, three, and four. Uh. Mm. All right, let's take it down to sixteenth notes, huh? Some big kid tempos, big kid tempos. One, two, sha, 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 sha. One, two, sha, 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 sha. Couple more here. Couple more. One, two, sha, 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 sha. That's the sound. One more. One more. One more. We got it. We got it. We got it. One, two, sha, da, 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 da. How great is that? So useful too. And what's cool is once you get into these sort of realizing there's little shapes, little modules that you can move around, you know, you can slip and slide just on whatever you, whatever like you land on. You know, so if I'm even just like, I can just end a half step up, whatever shape that is, or check this out. A half step down works just as well. It's just a whole different vibe. What's cool too is you could, if you wanted to, keep going with that shape up in that half step and then bring it back and you can mess around with delaying it as much as you want and it's awesome. Okay. All right, we have this idea now, right? In hand, hopefully. Let's just, uh, let's play around with it. I'll be, I'll be the bass player. We got a hi-hat here. We won't go super, super fast. We'll give you some room. If you're more an advanced player, you can do 16th notes or triplets what's great are oh, these modules by the way for triplets it's like automatic three over four like two one two da, 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 da. it's that sound Man, it's so cool like if you're working to get a cool triplet thing a three over four four over three whatever triplet thing these these work great all right i'll play the bass you uh you do where you're comfortable one two one two three and it's all just d minor right this is used mostly 
in a uh, modal context. I'm going to be using other contexts, but we're just playing over D minor here. Like impressions or so what. with the pattern that we have or experiment with your own way of playing these modules and then take them up or down a half step. I hope you found that useful. I love practicing like this and it makes it really easy to simplify things and just anything we can do to think about less information, I'm very much for because there's, you know, there's a lot of notes that we can play here. So thank you for your practice today. Um, hey, you know what? We work on this all the time is at Open Studio. If you like what you saw here, how about a like and subscribe? Give us a like and subscribe. Maybe put the bell on. We're live all the time with these kinds of things. So check it out. And also uh, check out the link before, uh, below the link before. Check out the link below because we have a course called Jazz Piano Technique Pentatonics where we talk about all of this stuff. Me and Peter Martin teach you how to practice pentatonics in this way and it's super, super cool. Again, that's Jazz Piano Technique Pentatonics. So check that out. Cool. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your practice today. Until next time, happy practicing. And thank you, YouTube. I got some questions in here. Can you uh, Piano Man says, can you post the cluster groups again, please? I sure will. Thanks for all the great stuff. Here's the just the original uh, four-note cluster groups that we're working with here, right? We just, we're just taking the pentatonic scale and we're just putting it in, into like a grouping of four and then taking that up. Thank you, Judah. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Monica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Anthony, uh, can you show us this in the context of a progression? So as I said, like we were kind of doing just, you know, but like, say you're doing something like solar, you can do it even like on a, on a two of a two five, you can do these modules on that. Or like, let's say, so we have, um, we have this, right? D minor. This works really well. Like just if you have just a B flat major seven. It's the same scale. Like it's the same pentatonic scale that you would use the F major or D minor pentatonic scale. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I practice it with a swing feel? Yes, you can. Awesome, Noriko. Thank you very much. Thanks, Austin. Nice. Yes, Frederick, it's like cheating, but it's not. It's how it's how a lot of folks, a lot of very brilliant musicians have gotten outside sounds. Thank you, Narda, for the happy 100th. Yes, yes, number 25. Keep going. We'll be there. Thank you, Jarko. Appreciate it. Thank you, George. Cool. 
Right on, folks. Thank you for your work today. Super fun. I'll be back here on Tuesday. Again, hit like, like, and subscribe. Go check out Jazz Piano Technique Volume 1, Pentatonics. Until next time, happy practicing. <laughs>